Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda, and please welcome to our Operation Freedom platform, WeThePeopleProcessing.com. You know, are, are you tired of being threatened to be canceled just because you have a company focused on liberty and freedom? Well, worry no more, folks. WeThePeopleProcessing.com is your go-to merchant services, freedom-based company to provide business service payment solutions. We The People Processing provides their clients a cancel culture free platform which is domestically based. They provide competitive rates, no contracts with next day funding, a fully vetted and like-minded financial infrastructure and full support for integrations, implementation and e-commerce efforts. Bottom line, WeThePeopleProcessing.com focuses on defending your company's free market growth, values, and future. Check them out at www.wethepeopleprocessing.com. Once you're on the site, enter in password Operation Freedom or call 855 499 2024. That's WeThePeopleProcessing.com. Then, when on the website, Enter Operation Freedom as your password or call 855-499-2024. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically any question? Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you say categorically You are fake news. Sir. I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Dave versus the MSM. I'd like to thank you for joining me today and thank you for networking this information to anyone and everyone you know. The more people that become educated, the more people that become empowered, and the sooner we end this reign of terror by the deep state. Look, they want you to the syndicate, the globalist syndicate, the new world order crowd, the deep state, the criminal international banking syndicate, the thugocracy, whatever you want to call it. They want you to believe that they got this all locked up in their favor. Nope, not happening. Why? Because of the awakening of the public. And you have been a critical component of that. Look, we create buckets of truth and facts and data and science that the bought off lamestream fake media tentacle of the deep state will never discuss. We create those in the independent media. And we do this on this platform every day. And then you take that and you take those buckets to your friends and families and coworkers and neighbors and maybe even people you don't even know. And in the process, they might not at first accept it, but you'll plant the seed and they'll start checking it out and looking at things a little differently. And, and before long, they'll come back to you and say, you know, I thought you were off when you brought me this information, but you know what? I investigated and you're right. Tell me more. It's that bucket of brigade of truth that has caused a huge awakening. And everything you see happening is not because the syndicate is so powerful. It's because they're so desperate and they're so panicked. So today's presentation is entitled, The Government is Here to Help You not. I want to take you back to August 12th, 1986. Ronald Reagan at a press conference said the following, quote, the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, end quote. A couple years after he said that, um, toward the end of his presidency, I was asked to work on health care policy for the Reagan administration. And when I got to Washington and to the White House, uh, the new people that were brought in, of which I was one of them, were brought in a room and uh, one of President Reagan's aides came to speak with us. And here's what this person said to us that we were there to create policy for the Reagan administration and that the president would be reviewing these policies. And that when we create these policies, 
we should not create the policies on a right-left axis. That the right-left axis was theater. It is meant to have people go head-to-head -head and divide the public so that an agenda could be put forward that potentially would either have beneficial or significant negative ramifications. Okay, And what she said was that the President Reagan runs his administration on an up-down axis, up being freedom and down being oppression, and the key was to push policies and agendas that promoted freedom and policies agenda that blocked the oppression that was being perpetrate, perpetrated on the public for decades by our own government and by industry in our country and around the world by people that pushed the oppression side of the equation. Okay. She never said deep state. She said never said new order crowd. This was again in 1988. But that's what she was talking about. And in fact, Ronald Reagan, if you listen to a speech he gave, it was in 1963 for Barry Goldwater, when Barry Goldwater was running for president against Johnson. And Ronald Reagan gave a speech. It's called the Up-Down Speech. Up being freedom, down being oppression. It's on a search engine of your choice. Check it out. It's a great speech. But what was pointed out, and it was really the first... Uh, the first time in public I had heard this, if you will, when this aide said that there were people in our own government that were focused from every agency on blocking people's freedom and liberty. And our goal from the policies we create and provide to the president were to block those that are trying to do that and push a freedom-based agenda. Now, Tulsi Gabbard, who ran for presidency on the D side in 2020, ultimately endorsed Joe Biden, has been taking on the syndicate of late. Now, I've done a video, and if you haven't watched it, you should, called It's Time to Be a Sheepdog and Not a Sheep. So as I point out in that video, there are sheepdogs like us who protect the flock, protect the public, focus on freedom and liberty. Okay? There are sheepdogs. Too few of us, but there are sheepdogs. I consider you a sheepdog. If you're viewing this video, you will network it. You're a sheepdog. But there are too many sheeple in our country that just sit on the couch and don't do anything and just take in all the garbage and become fearful and the like. So, and we, and we have to realize why they are fearful is because there are wolves, the globalists. What we have to be wary of are wolves that dressed up in sheep's clothing. Now, why do I bring this up with Tulsi Gabbard? Tulsi Gabbard has a history of being trained through the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, and their Young Leaders Group. She has a history of sitting on the Council on Foreign Relations. And she backed Biden in 2020. Now, that doesn't mean you can't change. However, I've never seen an interviewer address her on her position with the Council on Foreign Relations in the past and why she left and did she really leave and her training with the World Economic Forum. I can tell you I was contacted by some people when she was running for president in 2020 about interviewing her. And I said, okay, but I'm going to give you a heads up. The first two questions I'm going to ask is her relationship with the World Economic Forum and her upbringing by them and her position with the Council on Foreign Relations, which she is no longer with, but why did she leave and did she really leave? Okay, we'll get back to you. They never did. So when I mentioned about Tulsi Gabbard, she talks all the right talk now, okay, about accountability and the globalist side of the equation. But is this talk or is she actually walking the walk? And until she is asked these questions, we don't know. But I want to talk about something she said. And here's what she said. Washington elite pose the greatest threat to democracy. I would agree with that. 
But is she saying that so she can dress up in sheep's clothing? Or does she really mean it? Former Rep. Tulsi Gabbard says that the greatest threat to democracy isn't Trump voters or parents protesting at school board meetings, but the permanent Washington elite, which has weaponized the government and teamed up with corporate media to intimidate and silence those who dare to disagree with them. I would agree with that. Is that Tulsi who's now trying to be a sheepdog? Or is that Tulsi, a wolf dressed up in sheep's clothing, wolf being where she started with the World Economic Forum and the Council on Foreign Relations? Nonetheless, what she says, I believe, is accurate. Whether she believes that, I don't know, which is why we need to ask her those important questions. But a really great example that the government is not here to help you is what occurred in front of Independence Hall in Philadelphia on September 1st by Joe Biden. I call it Il Demente's Inferno. Okay, so let's dissect that out. Il Demente. Um, he was, they had the Independence Hall bathed in blood red behind him, Marines on the side. You know, these guys were behind Joe. And not really, but that's what they wanted to make you think. And here he was at a podium screaming, shaking his fist like Mussolini. You know, the fascist from Italy from World War II. Scr right? Now, Mussolini's name was Il Duce, which is why I call Biden Il Demente. And that's how he was acting. He was off the rails. And I call it Il Demente's Inferno because Dante's Inferno, the 14th century poem, which is about a walk through hell, that speech was a walk through hell. Biden goes all out, warns of grave threat posed by MAGA forces. This was a divide and conquer speech. Okay? It was meant to instill fear. Truly, the government is not here to help you when you watch that speech to ostracize, demonize tens of millions of peaceful Americans that are exercising their rights of free speech and living their lives as they see fit, legally, nonviolently. But you see, this speech was a speech of hate. And it was a speech out of pure desperation. It wasn't meant. It should not be seen as a position of power. It was hysterical. It was desperate and panicked. Why desperate and panicked? Because people have awakened that the government is not here to help you. And there have been some recent events that have solidified the fact that the government is not here to help you, even amongst the zealots in the People's Republic of Ann Arbor, also known as Moscow on the Huron River. They even, in the past couple, three months, have come to the realization that, uh-uh, the government is not here to help you. Let me, let me give you an example. Some, I, I think there have been some wake-up calls here. One of the wake-up calls was this recent passage of the Inflation Production Act, or what he calls the Inflation Reduction Act. It's not going to reduce inflation. It increases government spending by $750 billion. Milton Friedman, the uh, Nobel Prize winning economist from the University of Chicago, told us many years ago, and he was right, that you get inflation when you have too many dollars chasing too few goods. We are in a stagflationary environment. Too few goods, too much money, we now create $750 billion. But part of that $750 billion was to hire 87,000 new IRS agents and spend $80 billion. What? To collect more taxes? That's going to reduce inflation? What? And then they put out a, a job description that they were very kind of nebulous on at the very beginning. 
And then after about a week after they got tremendous blowback, they dialed it back and said, well, when we were talking about uh, um, uh, carrying a firearm and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, arresting people, that, that was just for the investigative division. Well, when you look at the investigative division of the IRS, it's about 3,000 agents. Um, but they've already been allocated 4,600 guns and 5 million rounds of ammo. When you look at the Inspector General's report that was generated on the investigative department of the IRS, they found that 58% of the time, the weapons they discharged were discharged accidentally, kind of like a Barney Fife on the Andy Griffith show where he used to put this gun in his holster and it used to go off, you know, and have to have his gun taken from him and his bullet put back in his pocket. Remember that? Why do they need 5 million rounds when they had 19 discharges over a three-year time period? Well, because they need it for training. Well, the ins same inspector general said that their training is inadequate with the firearms, which is why they have such a high rate of accidental discharges. You see, people saw that job description and said, stop. This is in the Inflation Reduction Act? What? And as Tom Massey, the congressman from Kentucky, pointed out, these are not replacements. These are new positions that are being allocated, 87,000. What percentage are going to go into that investigative division? See, that was a wake-up call to people. The other wake-up call was how they rated Trump's Mar-a-Lago office and residence on August 8th. You see, even the most ardent Trump despiser out there and there are a lot of them out there. And Ann Arbor came to me and said, you know, I don't like him, but this was not right. This was a violation of the constitutional right. Right. Another wake-up call that government is not here to help you. And finally, Another wake-up call that occurred was when the CDC changed their guidance on their, right? Those exposed to the virus are no longer, this is from NPR, are no longer required to quarantine. So in other words, not so much on the lockdown thing. The unjabbed now have the same guidance as the Jabbed, in other words, no benefit, doesn't work. This is the CDC. The third is students can stay in class after being exposed to the virus. In other words, uh, social distancing, not so much. It's no longer recommended to screen those without symptoms, in other words, Asymptomatic transfer does not occur. No reason for the, right. People say, wait a minute, for three years you've been pushing this. If people have lost their lives uh, on your recommendations, there have been a lot of people injured. The businesses have been ruined. The economy has been devastated. And now you're saying, yeah, forget about it. The last, You see, government is not here to help you. And when you add the CDC guidance changes, and you add to that the Trump raid, and you add to that the Inflation Production Act with the IRS, people that were the most brain dead about the government and their role in not helping you awakened. Yeah. So what did they do? They paraded El Demente out there to give his Inferno speech. Not because they're winning, but because they're losing. Outgoing Whole Foods CEO, quote, I feel like socialists are taking over, end quote. 
This is from Dick, Nick Gillespie. Quote, this is this, the CEO, John Mackey. My concern is that I feel like socialists are taking over, John Mackey stated, the outgoing Whole Foods CEO. Quote, they're marching through the institutions. They're taking over education. It looks like they've taken over a lot of the corporations. It looks like they've taken over the military, and it's just continuing. You know, I'm a capitalist at heart, and I believe in liberty and capitalism. Those are my twin values. And I feel like, you know, with the way freedom of speech is today, the movement on gun control, a lot of the liberties that I've taken for granted most of my life, I think are under threat, end quote. Awakening. And then Telsey Gabbard again, talking the talk. We need to see, is she really going to walk the walk of freedom? Democrats are coming after middle-class, hard-working Americans, she states. Our democracy is in grave danger. This is from Zero Hedge. Telsey Gabbard unleashes a torrent of facts in what most of the left in Washington would call conspiracy theory and hate speech, pointing out the fact that everything from the IRS to the Department of Homeland Security is, quote, blatantly being weaponized to target political opponents of those in power and anyone who dares to dissent or question or challenge their actions and policies, unquote. As Gabbard points out, quote, it's not a theory that the IRS will abuse its power to go after political opponents. We have already seen them do it, mm -hmm. end quote. Yeah, I can attest to that. 51% of all IRS audits last year were for those who earned less than $75,000. So unless they change their doctrine, it's pretty clear the average American is going to feel the scrutiny of the IRS in a way they're not prepared for. This government bureaucracy at its worst. They are taking money out of our pockets to go and plus up their force and their ability to maintain power and take more money from us, end quote. She's right. Again. In a nutshell, the government is not here to help you, or me, or anyone. Fact. So what do we do about it? Well, one, we educate others, and thereby empower them. Two, we peacefully protest, and we hold everyone in government, federal, state, and local, accountable for their actions and and or their lack of actions, and we let them know we're watching them and what they're doing. And we present them with a, what I do, bullet point list of here is where you have fallen down on your job. And because of that, if you don't rectify this right away, we are going to find someone to run against you in the primary and defeat you. You see, many people believe that doesn't work. Trust me, I've done it for many years. It does work. What they are most afraid of is accountability and people that are awakened. Because people who are awakened hold their feet to the fire of truth. They realize that they can only rig an election so much. And then if enough people get wise to their what they're up to, they won't win, and they won't sit in their big, fat, leather, cushy chair much longer. And that petrifies them. So, it's up to you. We provide the buckets of truth and data and science on a number of different issues on our platform, DaveJanda.com. We are there 24-7. It's up to you to take those buckets and bring them to your friends, families, neighbors, coworkers, so they too can be educated and thereby empowered, and in the process, take the necessary steps so that our country has a government that at least in some semblance of a percentage works for people. It happens. There are many good people in government, but they're just suppressed by the many bad people. There are many people in government that focus on that upside of the equation. To this day, we just need to stifle those that are working on the oppression side. And that is where input into the system helps, of you letting people know 
that you're wise, that you're awakened, and that you are going to make sure that freedom prevails. I thank you for your time. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. We are available at DaveJanda.com 24-7. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time today.